Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. Before we get going, I want to remind you, tax season is coming up and thus crypto tax season. So everybody needs to be thinking about that. And um, uh, when the, the thing I, I use is Coin Tracker, Coin Tracker, um, and you can, I'll put a link to this in the top of the description of this video. This is it's so easy because it just literally sucks in all your transactions from you just uh, set up all the places where you're buying and selling and then uh, it sucks them in. Then you can print out reports. You can just email the reports to your accountant. Nice and easy. It's impossible to calculate all this stuff without something like this. Now, uh, wanted to, I decided I'd do a video for you on one of the most interesting topics since I got into crypto. Uh, topics around Ripple and XRP, and that is SDRs. So I'm going to start you off here. I went back for fun and looked. There was so much interesting things that came out of eh, between 2018 and 2021 or so on SDRs. So watch this. This is a, a guy that's explaining kind of about SDRs first. And when I hit zero, that's, that's the end. The quantity of deposits here doesn't change. It's just being transferred back and forth, as opposed to the Bancor plan, where imbalances cause an increase in reserves, an increase in the quantity of international money. Here, the quantity of international money is fixed. And not only that, when you hit zero, you paid out all your SDRs, okay, and you still have a deficit, what do you do? Well, we all know what you do. You go to the IMF and you say, I now need to borrow okay, from you. I need to borrow in order to make my payments. And the IMF says, okay, we'll lend you some money, but it's going to cost you. And it's going to cost you in interest rates, okay, not negative interest rates, okay, but also conditionality and of, of economic policy and, and all of that. Okay. Uh, end game, demise of the U.S. dollar is a benchmark global reserve currency. We'll still have dollars, but it'll be local currency. Well, we all know that SDR is world money. Uh, there's something called the permissioned hyperledger fabric version one i released july 2017 by the linux foundation this is the future of the blockchain bitcoin's a dead end the current blockchain architecture is a dead end hyperledger fabric version 1.0 and there'll be subsequent versions is the future of the blockchain uh, a permission system just means you can only be in it if we say so uh, so the imf is already working on a permissioned hyperledger for the 189 members so they can move SDRs back and forth among each other in a blockchain type format that you can't participate in. But that's how countries will settle balance of payments and uh, sooner than later will price oil uh, in SDRs and that'll be the end of the dollar. And in a liquidity crisis, when you have to reliquify the world with SDRs, they'll use this veto power to get rid of the dollar. So uh, no, no world powers to ever survive without a IMF. dominant currency. Do you see IMF holding crypto assets in the future? I did not. No, that's a video we've played many times before. That's Brad Garlinghouse with, at the time, the general counsel of the IMF. He sure was Cut that up there. confident. Remember, I'm from the legal department. I'm supposed to be very conservative about these things. Um, I, I don't want to go into great details about Maybe the Maybe I should take what the IMF yeah, is going to uh, do. Uh, I think we stunned uh, Ross into silence with that one. For that to happen, okay, under the current legal framework, some country would have to use a crypto asset as its currency. Okay, and then this, you know, Bob Way showed back up in social media recently, but he said this back in uh, April 12, 2019 in a thread he was in. Note, I didn't say XRP should replace the SDR, nor did I even say XRP should be included in, in, a, in the basket of currencies now. But SDR is, co is cooperative is a cooperative mechanism of borrowing other liquid currencies among countries. The XRP ledger is great at tracking those relationships. Interesting. And here's Jim Rickards again. This is a, see, these videos are from back in any of you OGs out there. A lot of these are the interesting videos that came out of those times. Fascinating times. Um, you know, the fact that the five largest banks in America have a higher percentage of total banking assets 
than they did in 2008. So there's more concentration. Uh, that's another risk factor. Take, taking that all, all into account, you can say that the next crisis will be exponentially worse than the last one. That's an objective statement based on complexity theory. So you either have to believe that we're never going to have a crisis. And I'm like, well, you had one in 1987, you had one in 1994, you had one in 1998, you had the dot-com crash in 2000, mortgage crash in 2007, Lehman in 2008. Don't tell me these things don't happen. They happen every five, six, seven years. It's been 10 years since the last one. Doesn't mean it happens tomorrow, but nobody should be surprised if it does. So the point is, this crisis is coming because they always come, and it'll be exponentially worse because of the scaling metrics I mentioned. Who's ready for that? Well, the central banks aren't ready. You know, in 1998, Wall Street bailed out a hedge fund, long-term capital. In 2008, the central banks bailed out Wall Street, Lehman, you know, but Morgan Stanley was ready to fail, Goldman was ready to fail, et cetera. In 2018, 2019, sooner than later, who's gonna bail out the central banks? You know, the problem is never gone away. We just get bigger bailouts at a higher level. What's bigger than the central banks? Who can bail out the central banks? There's only one institution, one balance sheet in the world that can do that, which is the IMF. The IMF actually prints their own money. Uh, the SDR, the special drawing right. You know, SDR is not strawberry daiquiri on the rocks, it's a uh, special drawing right. It's world money, that's the easiest way. To world money, that's a thumbnail by the way. Um, anyway, this, these are interesting, an interesting um, series of, of video, like just some, some interesting ones that I found. Now, this is a clip from uh, Jim, one of R Jim Rickard's books, and I don't see which book it is, but it's worth, it's worth us going through it. SDRs are issued infrequently. Let me adjust my glasses here. SDRs are issued infrequently. There have been on, only four issuances in the 47 years since SDRs were invented. Most recent um, issuance, I, I'm having a hard time with the way this thing's, uh, most recent issuance was in August 2009 near the depths of the global recession uh, that followed the 2008 panic. Last issuance before that was 1981. By September 30th, 2016, SDR 204, uh, 1 billion were outstanding, equal to, the, uh, to about 285 billion then current exchange rates. One interesting property of the SDR is that it solves Triffin's dilemma. No, I gotta write that down. Triffin's dilemma, that's a great thumbnail. Um, one second, okay, all right. It solves Triffin's dilemma. This economic conundrum was posed by Belgian economist Robert Triffin in testimony to Congress 1960. Triffin observed that the issuer of a global reserve currency had to run persistent deficits to supply the world with sufficient reserves for normal trade. Yet a nation that runs deficits long enough goes broke. In this context, going broke means trading partners lose confidence in the stable value of the reserve currency and reject it in favor of alternatives. SDRs solve this problem because the issuer, the IMF, is not a country and does not run deficits. There are no confidence boundary on the amount of SDRs issued. The IMF has no trading partners to reject its money. The IMF encompasses all trading partners. SD, SDRs are not issued in, in the conduct of normal monetary policy. They are not issued to bail out individual firms or even countries. They exist primarily to provide liquidity from thin air when there's liquidity crisis or loss of confidence from other money forms. SDRs are world money fire brigade to douse financial infernos. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Financial uh, infernos. Uh, almost like the rising phoenix, right? Uh, financial firms. SDRs are the perfect complement to ICE-9. Ooh-ooh. Remember ICE-9, those videos I've shown you um, of Jim Rickards where he's talking about how the banks will shut down, declare a bank holiday, and you won't be able to get your money. And then we've co covered the bail-ins recently. Perfect complement to ICE-9. In the coming collapse, the financial system will be frozen because central banks are unable to reliquify the system as in the past, the G20 will convene an emergency meeting. Um, emergency meeting? I'm writing these down. Um, emergency meeting, as happened in November 2008, the direct IMF to reliquify the system with SDRs. If successful, banks and brokers will gradually reopen. Customers will be allowed to access cash transactions and cash and securities still, will still be denominated dollars, da da da. 
Very interesting passage right there. Now, I want to uh, show you a couple more uh, things. I've shown you this. This is the end of a, a Jim Rickards video where he says, in game. This is interesting. Jim Rickards, um, this digital nomad investor a while back, had uh, posed this. Hello, Jim. Christine Lagarde, the IMS, said she can see a digital asset coupled with the SDR in the future. What is your opinion on that happening? It will happen, but it will be controlled by the IMF, not a bunch of freelance devs. And then there's this one. This is Mark Carney, okay? Used to be the governor of the Bank of England. He's on the board at Stripe. Stripe just happens to um, be the company that invested early in Stellar, by the way. Listen to this. But the payment system itself, um, and how can that be improved? There's a variety of ways that uh, it is being improved, and there's others. But one of the issues, which is links back to the speech, is uh, whether or not there are going to be central bank digital currencies um, uh, in order for there to be instantaneous, costless payments domestically um, and potentially cross-border, uh, which would be to the benefit of citizens and businesses, and particularly small and medium-sized businesses, but all businesses. And the question is whether if that, if could, could that happen? And the answer is yes, it could happen, in fact. Mr. Haldane is helping to lead our efforts in thinking about how the various ways, and there's more than one way you could do it, and various avenues to do it. Um, but the question is, if you do have that happen, um, does it make sense to do it on a coordinated uh, fashion with uh, some of the core central banks, which brings benefits in and of itself from a cross-border perspective, but happens to be a component of a more seamless rebalancing of uh, how transactions are priced because, and I'll finish with this, it's not just about the financial spillovers, although those are incredibly important and they're one of the reasons why the equilibrium interest rate is so low and Dr. Gallegan in another speech pointed out that why the left-hand tail risk is higher, um, but it's the fact that a disproportionate uh, amount of real transactions, purchases of goods and services are priced in U.S. dollars, even when the two countries have nothing to do with the U.S. They're not, they don't touch the U.S. Um, and as more and more activity moves online, the question is, what is the currency of choice online? Um, and could the currency of choice online be better balanced between a basket of central bank digital currencies, uh, which is not a new currency, but is a back-to-back -back of those. What and if that's the currency the of choice online was Elon Musk's on Twitter? What if it was a currency that started with an X? What if? And then this is, um, uh, what's her name? Lynette Zhang, I believe. She's very smart. Listen to this. IMF has approved a historic 650 billion SDR allocation of special drawing rights. Now, if you haven't been watching my work for a while, I'll go over a little bit what the SDR is in just about two seconds. But this is a historic decision, the largest SDR allocation in the history of the IMF and it will benefit all members. So it is a general allocation to all of their members, which is pretty much everybody on the planet, 189 members. All of the, their members at the IMF are treasury secretaries and central bank heads. Now the SDR is the currency of the International Monetary Fund, the IMF. It is a basket of currencies that are composed of five different currencies, the US dollar, the Euro dollar, uh, the Chinese Yuan, uh, the British pound, and I don't know, something else. But they can expand that basket to include all the currencies that they want. It was created in 1969 to take over as the world reserve currency from the US dollar. But then Kissinger went to Saudi Arabia, they created the petrodollar, and so the SDR went to sleep. And all the mechanisms that they, that they created to make this transfer happen went to sleep. In 2008, of course, we had the financial crisis, and it was actually one of the, in China, they came out and said, well, what about the SDR? And I thought, well, that's absolutely right. 
And so they tested all of these mechanisms to see if they would work. And so, yes, there is a crisis, but it's much bigger than that. So the special drawing rights, you know, I mean, why do you care, right? Well, I'm telling you right now, you really need to care about this because it has impact on your very life, your standard of living. Bingo. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family about SDR.